Good evening. Welcome to Pueblo City County Library District. I am pleased to have Polly Washburn here with us tonight as we kick off the 48-hour film festival with a workshop on the three phases of production. Polly Washburn is an award-winning producer who works under the umbrella of storytelling via journalism, video, and web content. Very pleased to have you here with us tonight. Thank you, Polly. Thank you, Regina Renee. Great to be here. Will I see the participants or not really? No. <laughs> okay, well, hello out there to those joining live and in the future. Um, as Regina Renee said, I am a producer of films. I'm gonna share my screen here. I've got some slides um, that will hopefully help us tonight walk through the three phases of production. And then I'll take questions if we can make that happen. That would be cool. Wonderful. All right, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Wonderful. Uh, so the subtitle I gave tonight's talk was how to make the most of every hour by planning ahead. So this is the key in my opinion to producing is um, especially for something like a 48 hour film project where you have a very limited amount of time is you really wanna plan ahead so that you know exactly what you're doing when it comes time to start filming. So just quickly about me, um, currently I uh, just finished a documentary called Seeking Solutions with my partner. Uh, it's a one hour documentary. We had interviewed nine people about the American immigration system and created our documentary. And uh, just list a couple other projects here that uh, I've worked on over the years, um, including a feature length film that won Best Picture at two American film festivals and Audience Choice Award at a third one. So that's, that's where the award winning comes in. Um, but I did want to point out as well that um, I was the city producer for Toronto, whoops, um, for the 48 hour film project, the first time that the 48 hour film project was done there. So I do have experience in helping people understand what's required for the 48 hour film project and um, watching those films and seeing which ones were popular. So if you, people have questions about that, I would be happy to answer that as well when we get to the end. So I wanted to play you just a little trailer of that film, Passion Flower, that I mentioned, just to give you a taste of a period piece film that I created or helped create. having some difficulty sleeping. <laughs> what do you think? And you're concerned that... Uh... It, uh, it's just a little bit of stress. It's actually a little bit more than that. See right there, that's the pro produced by Polly Washburn. All right, just wanted to give you a taste of uh, the kind of project that I've worked on. Um, so that one was a period piece set in the 1960s. So it took a lot of work to get the right cars and all the props and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's a bigger scale than uh, you'll be doing here for the 48 hour film project. Um, but what I'll do is talk to you about the three phases and um, talk about the different parts, 
that you need to be thinking about in each phase. And I'll talk about it in terms of um, big feature length film production, but I'll also make some notes about what will make sense for you um, working in the 48 hour film project. So pre-production. So this is before you start filming, you have to have a script. Do you have a question? No, okay. <laughs> Um, before you do anything, obviously you need to, to get a script together um, and then find some actors and then create storyboards, which is a way I like think about a um, cartoon with different bo um, boxes in it that tell the story that you're gonna have in a more visual way than a script does. And then break down your script, and I'm gonna show you some examples of these things to, to get a, a shot list. Um, so that's your director and your director of photography would work together to do that. And oh, here we go. This is an example of what a, a script, ah, sorry, whenever I click on it, of course, <laughs> moves ahead. Um, so the as, as if you wanna get fancy, this is what a script looks like. You can of course just create something in a, a Word document and you could even handwrite it if you had to, but the idea is to put in both the dialogue for all the characters and description of what's going on and where are you. Int stands for interior. So this is a script that starts in a car. So interior of a station wagon day, so you want to be thinking, is it a daytime shot? Is it a nighttime shot? What's going on? Um, if you can see, the person's name is in capitals, so Duncan. And then they've also capitalized props. So thinking ahead to what kind of props you might need if you were going to film this scene. And then you put the dialogue. So somebody OS means off screen. So somebody saying Duncan. And then you're telling the camera people what you want to have happen. You want to do a close up on the rear view mirror. And then, yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Then you have Trent's dialogue. Are you sleeping? And then you could describe what the character is feeling. And then more dialogue. So that's what a script would look like. And then when I talk about breaking it down into a shot list, Here's what a shot list looks like. So what you want to be thinking about is, you know, ahead of time, before you get anywhere near a camera, sit down with the person who's going to be your videographer, also known as a director of photography, and figure out like, okay, what are what are all the shots we want? So um, in the shot list, they're listing all the shots in order. And so again, are we inside or outside, interior or exterior? And then the shot type, I put the um, kinds of shots over here that are pretty typical, a wide shot, very wide shot, medium shot, medium close up, close up. You could have a, a VCU, a very close up. Whoop, sorry about that. Um, and then who's in the shot? What characters are gonna show up in the shot? And then a description of it, what's happening? In, in the scene. So you could have a, a single scene with a, a, a several different types of shots, right? So you could have a, a wide shot that captures everything in the scene, and then you could have a close up of just one of the characters or one of the characters eyes even super close up. So just, you wanna be thinking ahead of time, um, what's gonna happen in the scene and what's the order you're gonna shoot it in. So, what else do you need to be thinking about? You need to think, you know, for your, for you all, it's only gonna be two days of shooting maximum. So uh, um, what, what are you gonna shoot on each day? If you have multiple locations, um, you need to figure out which locations you would shoot at, you know, maybe Saturday morning, you'll shoot um, some stuff in the backyard and then Saturday afternoon you'll shoot inside the house or in another outdoor location if, to keep social distanced outside. Um, then you need to think about those props. What props do you need on a film? This is called the art director is in charge of that.
but on your project, you might only have a few people. So people might be doing more than one thing. You need to think if there's any outfits, costumes that you need. And for lighting and gear, um, again, you may only have a, uh, an iPhone or a regular phone, and um, but maybe you can get your hands on um, some lights that you can use in indoor scenes, whether those are professional lights or just lots of lamps, um, whatever, whatever you have available. Um, just again, be thinking ahead. What, do you, what are you gonna need to, to do your shoot? So that is the idea behind pre-production planning. Um, then you have to recruit a crew and in another kind of project, you'd be negotiating salaries, but for a 48 hour film project, it's probably you and a few friends um, and you'll decide who's gonna do what. Um, and then when you have your list of locations, you have to get permission possibly to shoot at those locations. I might be calling your mom and seeing if it's okay <laughs> to come shoot some video there. Um, you want to always be thinking ahead for food. If you do have some people volunteering to help you out, um, it's nice to pay them in food. And, and no matter what, you're going to get hungry at some point during the day. So it's a good idea to make sure you're thinking ahead about well, where's that food going to come. Because when it comes down to it, you're going to have to be working really, really fast. So the more things that you can take care of and, and not have to think about when you're actually filming, the better. And um, if you can, you know, arrange for somebody to drop off some food, then that's going to save you some time. But definitely take breaks. Um, so then you want to think about where the cast and crew um, need to be when. So maybe you've got like four different actors, but one of them's only in certain scenes. Um, so that's something called a call sheet, which I do have an example of for you. Um, there you go. So this one um, is for Michael Mann film. <laughs> I think they made this up, but basically, you know, um, showing and big letters, what time people need to be somewhere. You don't have to make anything this fancy, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, basically, you know, yours might be, again, a Word document that you send out by email or even just in the text of an email. Uh, but I just wanted to show you what it does look like on a, on a movie set. Um, and they say, you know, what day is it? Shooting day. So in this case, they had 30 days to shoot. Of course, again, you only have two. So, um, are you going to have a little rehearsal before you start shooting? And people often put in the sunrise and sunset, so you can be planning ahead in terms of if you have to get everything shot before the sun goes down, you want to know when when sunset is. Weather report, always nice. It's going to rain. You might have to think ahead about that. And then um, what are the scenes you're going to shoot in and what order are you going to shoot them in? So going back to that shot list, um, you would take your shot list and, and figure out like, okay, all of these scenes are happening in the house. So we're gonna shoot them all at the same time. Even if they happen at different times in the script, we'll shoot them at the same time. Um, so in this case, they're doing all the diner scenes at the same time. And then the cast numbers is, is, is who, who needs to be there for that scene. And DN is day or night. So again, thinking about, is it a daytime scene or a nighttime scene? <clears throat> They've got an all-star cast here on this call sheet. Um, so the, that's, the, that's the cast numbers that say which, which cast need to be there. So again, yours might not be this fancy. You might just have a list of which actors you need for which parts of the day. Um, and then, you know, again, what, what time, um, probably will not be picking people up, but uh, thinking about when you need people um, to get places. And it's always good to err on the side of getting them there early is my suggestion to you. So, um, I mean, not so early that, you know, people are standing around for hours, but um, things, things take longer than you think. So um, if you're lucky enough to get someone on board to do makeup, then you wanna get, um, your actors working with the makeup person. So this is MU for makeup. 
you want to get them working in, with the makeup person about an hour before they're seen. Um, I think that's basically it about call sheets. But again, you know, obviously yours doesn't have to be this fancy, but just think ahead. Have you heard the theme? Think ahead. <laughs> um, okay, so um, that's the call sheet. And then um, you're, again, your director of photography. And maybe, you know, again, if it's only a couple of you working on the film, these positions might all uh, end up being just two or three people, um, but you should definitely talk with your editor ahead of time if that's a separate person from your videographer um, and they need to talk about things like frame rate and aspect ratio. Um, so aspect ratio is like, is it gonna be in, I mean, it'd be very rare these days to have a uh, landscape <laughs> up and down. Um, type thing, but if you if you're doing a, a TikTok <laughs> type thing, that that could be um, more up and down. But usually, it's going to be uh, landscape, and then frame rate just means how many frames per second are you shooting. So on a on a um, phone, you probably only have a couple of choices, like thirty and sixty, um, but if you have a digital camera, you might have some more options and need to decide ahead of time what that's going to be. And then resolution is like how how big the files are going to be and, and how much information they have in them. So um, that might depend on, again, whether you're shooting on a, on a uh, phone or if you're shooting on a camera where you have SD cards that you can swap out. Um, if you are going to be using SD cards, then you want to get a system in place for how you're going to back those up during the day so you don't lose any of your information. So again, just like think of <laughs> what could go wrong and how you can avoid it. That's how I see the job of a producer. Um, and these um, items having to do with the editor, um, there's going to be another um, workshop next week that's going to talk almost all about um, getting ready with the editor and how to have everything ready to go so that as soon as the footage starts coming in, the editor can get to work. So I recommend that workshop if you want to learn more about editing and how to prepare. So that's again the script, chat list. Okay, and then production. Okay, so we had pre-production, before production, and now production, we're in the production. So production just means basically the days the camera is running. That's that's a good way to think of production. Um, so again, you wanna make sure that your cast and crew have those call sheets. Um, if anyone's gonna be on camera, then I recommend creating a release form where they give you permission to use their image on camera and um, just in case whatever you make now, you decide you do want to submit to a festival um, or something like that, it's a good idea to get release forms and you can just Google. So all these things that I've been talking about, call sheets, release forms, you can just Google release form example and you'll find some online. Um, same with call sheets, same with shot list, all of those things. Um, if you Google them, you'll find examples online that you can download and, and edit for your your own purposes. So, I mean, you know, something you find online isn't going to stand up in court for a, a big, huge release movie, but um, for for these purposes, you, you should be fine. You're just basically saying, I got everyone's permission to, to film them. So um, slating. So if you've ever seen a um, movie about making movies, slating is when they do the action with the, um, it's called the slate. Uh, it's just the thing that um, tells you what scene you're on, what shot you're on, what take you're on. So the take means, so you've heard this, I'm sure again, and if you've watched a movie about movies, take one, take two, take three, means you did the scene and the director wasn't happy, so you did another take of it or the actors wanted to try again. Um, so marking this for each scene is really, really, really important um, when you get to editing so that 
your editor um, knows what they're looking at. Um, and especially uh, helpful for them is if you do something called a shot or a take or a continuity log, which I have an example of here. Um, so this one I left blank so that you could see like so that that's what it would look like at the beginning of the day, it would be blank. Um, so you would say, what scene are you shooting? Slate um, would mean what's, what's written on the slate. Um, so again, usually that's some combination of scene and shot and take. Um, um, but if you have a digital slate, you could also put the, the time code in there. But um, the shot is which, which shot. So again, that goes back to your shot list. Oh. Uh, there we go. Here's our shot list. So remember, you gave all your shots a number. So that's going to come in handy when you're doing your slate and your log to say what's the shot number and then the take. So then the first, you know, first take you would put one and then two and then three. And the duration, um, that's not necessarily something you're gonna do live on set, but when you get to the editing room, um, you might say, you know, it's 30 seconds um, or starts at one minute, 30 second on the camera and ends at two minutes and 30 seconds. And again, what's going on in the shot. And then any notes like um, one of the actors messed up or a train came by, so we had to stop. You know, anything that's gonna give your editor a clue about is this shot even gonna be worth using? And then I put this in um, director rating or notes from the director, like I really want this one. Um, you know, so you could put a star here, if like, yeah, for sure, this is the take that we should use. Um, that's, that's again, helpful to, you know, if you end up doing five takes, you don't want the editor to have to go through and figure out which of the takes is the best one. It would be great if they already know, hey, look for the slate that says take five and use, use that. So that is, again, just some paperwork that will make life easier for your editor and make things go faster. Uh, all right, so that's, yes, yeah, so the slate and, and the log go together, basically. Sorry, this is all kind of hypothetical. <laughs> but um, even if you do something that approximates the kinds of things I'm talking about, then I think you'll find that you're, you're a, a step ahead when, when, you, when you get to the project. Um, okay, so then part, part three is, is post-production. So um, in this phase, you are done with the camera, right? So if production was when the camera's on, then post-production is after all the footage has been shot. Although I do wanna say for the 48 hour film project that you um, might, might mix up your production and post-production time. So you might you know, shoot a few hours of film and then you're gonna keep shooting, but if you have an editor that's um, ready to go, you could get them those first couple of hours of footage so that they could get started on editing. Um, so that's something to keep in mind for, for the 48 hour film project is if you can make that happen, it's a great way to uh, kind of get ahead on the editing is, is, is to start editing before you finish shooting. So um, just a little tip there. Okay, so yeah, so basically editing is about taking all the footage that you shot and then choosing the best takes. Um, sometimes if, if you have that log that I just showed you, it'll be clear what the best takes are, but um, the editor will also have some control. So if you shot uh, um, a, a close up of a face and then you shot a, a two shot with two actors in the frame and then you shot some sort of really long shot, um, they would chop that all up and figure out, uh, you know, what part of the scene makes sense to have the close up and what part of the scene makes sense to have the, the long shot, the wide shot. I'm gonna take a sip of water. Um, okay, so, so that's editing the pictures, figuring out the best takes, but then um, for sound, Right, you don't have to rely on just what uh, you filmed. You can add in some sound effects. You can add in some music, and for that again, you want to get permission 
to use it. Um, there's again, if you Google uh, royalty free music on, on um, the web, you'll get some great sites that exist now where people are just happy to share uh, their their music with the world to, to either get um, you know a credit in a movie or uh, just get people knowing about them. So um, that's kind of a cool way to, to find free music. And, but you do wanna, if, if it doesn't say um, that it's free, then, then you need to get permission. And but in the context of 40 hour film project, you're probably not gonna have time to do that. So <laughs> I would highly recommend either, if you have a friend that makes music, get something from them or um, going to one of these sites and, and um, getting royalty free music. Uh, and this is something called looping dialogue. And that's when uh, maybe you shot a scene and it turned out that, that you can really can't even hear the actors. So what you could do is just bring them um, just a microphone to repeat their dialogue. Um, in the context of 48 hour film project, I don't know if you're gonna have time to get this fancy, but it, it might be worth doing if there's like a really, really critical scene and you really can't hear the actors, that's obviously gonna, for the judges, um, gonna make life difficult for them. So. Uh, and your audience. So you wanna, um, if you can uh, fix that by by just recording audio with the actors and, and then sliding that into the scene. Um, and then if there's any other sound issues, um, there's a lot of good software out there that can help you um, if there was, like I said, like, you know, a train went by or something, uh, loud happen in the background. Um, there's some good software out there that can help you reduce those types of sounds. And then um, if you have time, it'd be good to show people the rough cut um, on any other kind of project for sure you would do this. You would show people the rough cut and get feedback from them um, and then take that feedback and bring it back into the editing room, make some edits, and color correction is um, when you take the film and instead of just using, you know, whatever light you had um, in the moment, you can actually get in there and, and, and make corrections. Like if you think about um, when you take pictures on your phone, you can put those filters on there. It's kind of like that. Um, or Photoshop, if you've ever used Photoshop to do, you know, make something lighter or darker. Um, you can do that with a, with a video as well. So um, if you have time, these are kind of bonus, bonus things you can do if you have time. Um, and then do like a final sound mix. So sometimes you, uh, you don't want your music to be so loud that you can't hear your dialogue or maybe one set of dialogue sounds nice and loud, but another part of the dialogue sounds soft. So you wanna get in there and make sure that they, they all sound about the same volume. And then um, something important again, in terms of planning ahead is figuring out how long is it gonna take you to export your final video so that you can submit it. And I'm guessing you're gonna upload it somewhere. So leave, leaving enough time, depending on your bandwidth to figure out um, how long it's gonna take both to do the export from your video editing, software and then how long is it going to take to upload it so that's something you could test even right now right you could um just take some random footage that's about how long you think your movie is going to be four or five minutes and see how long it takes to export and then see how long it takes to upload to youtube or any place like that so that you can kind of know okay i've got to leave an hour and a half at the end to to do these last couple stages. So you don't want to, you don't want to miss, you don't want to go through all this trouble and then, and then miss the deadline because you, um, your computer is taking too long to upload it. So just figure that out in advance. So back to our theme, <laughs> think <laughs> ahead, plan ahead, figure out what could go wrong and try to have a backup plan for how to make sure that it doesn't go wrong or if it does go wrong that you have. <laughs> <laughs> you have a plan for, for what you can do. Um, so I, I've maybe talked really fast. 
<laughs> um, so we're, we're, we're at about the, the half hour mark and I did want to um, take questions. I, I didn't know what exact the format would be. Um, I thought I'd be able to see people, but um, hopefully if there are questions, we'll be able to take some. Okay, well, let's see. I don't see any at this time, but I'll give people time to post. So while waiting for that, I'm curious to know, just not from the production side of things, but from the feeling and how you experience the 48 hour film project, what is like, what would make you do it again? What did you experience that would make you do it again? Yeah, so I actually, um, besides running the 48 hour project in Toronto um, about three years ago, I uh, did do a project here in Denver um, with uh, about three or four other people. And I just love the collaboration and the excitement. There's a lot of adrenaline to get through the, um, you know, to take a creative project from start to finish in 48 hours. It's really satisfying because those those other projects I was talking about those um, feature link projects can take years, literally, right? Writing the script and um, finding someone to give you money <laughs> to help make it. And then, you know, doing all that pre-production work and production work, most feature films take three weeks to, you know, just do the, the production time, much less the beginning, you know, the pre-production and the post-production. So um, it's pretty exciting to do a 48 hour project because it forces you to just get out there and do it instead of waiting until your script is perfect or until you have, you know, a certain amount of money or something like you just do it. And um, so, and then to be able to show it at the end uh, that quickly, you know, instead of waiting around for a film festival to take it or, you know, uh, again, these things could take months and years. So that's, that's the main thing is just kind of the instant gratification of being able to get your project made and then out into the world for people to see. So I remember at the time I had asked you when you had finished to describe the experience and how you were feeling in one word. And at the time you said humbled. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so that just leads me to ask is like, if you, if you were a participant in this 48 hour film festival. It's like, is there any one thing that you would do differently? Um, very good, good memory there. I, I think, I think, um, I think when I was saying that I, my, my thought was that, you know, oh, I've, you know, made these films and I can just come in here and do this, but every project is new. Every set of people working together is new. Um, so I think the biggest piece of advice I would have is to pick a, a team that you know you can work well with and that like even if things go wrong, you're gonna uh, just have a laugh about it and and you know move forward. Um, not, not that anything bad happened on my team, but just you know things are gonna go wrong. So I, I would say the, the, the main thing to just be prepared is you're gonna have this vision of how it's gonna go and, and um, all the things you want to do, but start with the things you have to have. Like when you, you know when you're making that shot list and deciding what you're going to shoot each day, figure out like what's the most important thing. So what are the things that use the thematic elements, for example? You know, make sure that all of that gets shots so that you have that no matter what else happens. And then, you know, if these other things get shot, then that's gravy, right? So um, the other thing I didn't really mention during production is, is, is really having someone, there's a reason there's an assistant director on, on big films is because that person's job is to not get carried away so much in the creative part, but to really be watching the clock and really figuring out, okay, we said we wanted to shoot five scenes today and it's 3 p.m. and we've only shot two, you know, 
what are we going to do? Like, you know, we have some hard decisions we have to make, or are we all agreed that we're going to just stay here till midnight? You know, just someone who's really keeping track of the time as you go is really important um, to make sure that you're going to stay on task. And then you really have to leave enough time for the editing. You know, like you can't really, you can't be shooting. I, I really recommend being done with, with filming um, on the, at the end of the, the first day so that you have plenty of time the second day to, to do your editing and all the parts I talked about, so, you know, get your picture editing done and then have time to make the sound really nice because sound makes a big difference in the, the quality. So just leaving time for everything I think is really important. Okay, so thank you for that. And we have a comment that's like, oh, that's a great recommendation. And also another question is, do you have a favorite project that you worked on? Um, I so think choose one of your babies, which was the favorite project. <laughs> well, I would say the, the one I showed you, the um, trailer, there's a reason I showed you that one, because it's just, I just loved um, that we were able to evoke the 1960s and find all the, the great props that we did in cars. And then I don't know if you remember the very last scene is her walking on the prairie. So this was in Manitoba, Canada. And the, I just loved that we could have the really intimate scenes inside and then have some really big landscape scenes and, and um, have that balance. So um, that's something I didn't talk about was B-roll. So, um, so you have all your scenes planned out of your, your people, your actors, doing the different scenes, but um, if you can, something that'll really kind of add to the aesthetics of, of the film is if you can shoot, you know, just what's what's the bigger natural world outside, or if you could go the other way and shoot, you know, really up close, the dishes in the sink, or, you know, just things that aren't people talking, um, really think about the visual elements. So when I was talking about those, the storyboards, that's what that's for, is to take your script, and even if it's just stick figures, um, just think about like, okay, for this scene, they're in the kitchen, and we're gonna, you know, shoot them doing their dialogue, but we're also gonna like, you know, one of them's gonna be chopping vegetables, and we're gonna zoom in on the knife, you know, banging on the butcher block, <laughs> you know, so really just, if you can just try to think visually. And, and um, there's a reason I'm mostly a producer and, and not a director is because, uh, and, a, and a writer, I'm, I'm mostly a writer as well as, I care a lot about the dialogue and less about thinking like, well, how far from the cupboard should we be? <laughs> or, you know, should we be inside the teacup? Um, my brain just doesn't necessarily think that way visually. So um, make sure there's someone on your team that cares about the words and then maybe it might be someone different who cares a lot about the visuals. Um, and you know, if someone wants to be a videographer, usually that's the person that, that's caring more about the visuals. Wonderful. So I'm gonna ask you a final question about your Pueblo connections. <laughs> but um, before I do that, I would really like to know, so it's like you talked about the producing. Next week, Wednesday, we'll be having another workshop on the editing. Um, could you say just a little more about the connection between the producing and the editing? Yes, I presume you don't mean <laughs> the connection between this particular producer and no. this particular editor. Um, so the relationship between the producing and the editing. Sure. So I think, um, the, you know, as we've talked about that, there's the three phases. So, um, there's this, there's a great quote that a, a movie is made. Um, no, well, now is it going to be three times or four times, but first it's made on paper, then it's made on film and then it's made on the editing suite. So like, um, I, I can't stress enough how important the editing phase is that I think a lot of people really focus on, on, on the, the filming stage. And that's again, why I would say stop filming, you know, at midnight or something on, on the first day so that you have as much time as possible for editing, because the editing is going to be um, what makes it artistic, what makes the difference between, you know, um, Again, just two people standing on the screen talking and mixing in those other elements that we were thinking of and mixing in, you know, music. How's the music 
going to affect the scene? Is it going to be upbeat? Is it going to be sad? Is it going to be scary? So, um, so producing for me is a creative act. So um, the producer should be working closely with the writer and the director and the editor so that everyone's on the same page. And, you know, so again, on a small project like this, probably the director and producer are the same person, um, but hopefully everyone's thinking in the mindset of a producer of like, okay, what's it gonna take for whatever someone signed up for to happen. So if they signed up to be the videographer, you know, really thinking again about that shot list, or if they signed up to be the editor, making sure they have everything they need ahead of time. And so that's, again, what next week will be about is making sure that conversation is happening between the person who's going to be shooting and the person who's going to be editing. And if it is the same person, making sure that they're as organized as possible ahead of time. Um, and, you know, have, <laughs> like so I was talking about the, the, the free music, have that website ready to go, you know, have everything uh, ready to go, because you can get everything prepared before the 48 hours start, you just can't actually, you know, start writing your script and, and doing the filming. So the more, the more prepared you can be and the more conversations you can have with each of the people who's going to be involved, including the editor, the better. Thank you. And so I asked, because I do want to invite everyone who's watching with us tonight to come back next week. So October 21st at 6 p.m., we will be having the second portion of this workshop series, Editing 101, in preparation for our 48-hour film project. So thank you very much for sharing your expertise. I'm really glad that you were able to join us, Polly. And I want to remind everyone that, yes, October 21st, Editing 101, but Friday, October 23rd, will be the reveal of the thematic elements. And so I'm very excited to have all of you join us. So thank you for your time, both of you know, those watching, and thank you for your time for um, sharing all of your expertise with us during this workshop. Sure. Good luck, everyone. Hope you have a great time. Have fun. I didn't, I, if I didn't say that, make sure you have fun. Like This should be a great time. Yes, have fun. Say goodbye to everybody in Pueblo. Bye-bye, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank Bye. you so Thank much. Thank you. Bye.